the sippy tail, the cultural challenge of the Tongan side. England players taking their position. <laughs> they played in some big game atmospheres, those England players. But they have never, ever encountered anything quite like this. Well, we have been sending postcards home about the ferocity of the fanaticism of these Tongan supporters. I don't think anyone quite believed how ferocious it was going to be. It really is, and I was their moment here, this isn't it? This is an astonishing sporting occasion, never mind a big occasion, yeah. sporting occasion here, Brian Noble. Absolutely a brilliant, brilliant opening to what should be a great event. Really concerned that England get their heads on the performance and I thought there were some really focused faces in relation to the England players in responding to the Sippy Tau. It's emotional for these Tongans, England have to take that emotion away. I think it's going to be a huge test for these Tongan players, especially a number of them haven't played in big games before. Certainly one of the best rugby league games in New Zealand that doesn't involve New Zealand, the atmosphere is absolutely electric. Well, I, could, I hope you could hear Brian and Justin back home because I'm literally standing next to them and I could not hear a word they said, so apologies if we repeat anything. But everything's OK, we're going to get this match underway. But if those England players have not been blown away by the emotion and the noise, then they should be settled for what is going to be quite a contest here. two worlds about to collide what's at stake is a world cup final place in brisbane in seven days hence and you know what right here right now that almost seems irrelevant it's all about this contest countdown on the big screen
into a thunderous noise. Hand in the air from Luke Gale to collect. First possession for England. James Graham runs it back. And England have the ball and a chance to settle with this first set of six. Yeah, I think one of Wayne's mantras will be to complete the first ten sets. Take this energy away from this Tongan team. Kick the ball into the corners. Don't worry about it. That 30 metre area at the other end of the field. Andrew they're not as dangerous there as they are near England's line. One of the advantages England will have in the first half is a little bit of wind. There's a, quite a strong breeze, and I would imagine they're going to use that in this first half to win the field position. There's Whitehead up to the halfway line. Hudson at dummy half. Back to the middle, and Gale with a kick. High towards the corner, but it's going to be Hopawati who's underneath this. And a thunderous noise greets his and Tonga's first involvement with ball in hand. A dummy half, it's in Ghana. England looking to stifle the ambitions early on here. Conrad Hurrell, who we're led to believe had a bit of a, an injury scare coming into this match. OK to go. And taken on again. And the offload... England have to be aware of the offload. Lola here takes them 10 inside the England half. Here's Havili. England's defence being battered here, but one tackle to go. Left it comes to Ingardo, gets the kick away. It was under pressure. It maybe wasn't as deep as he was hoping. Tupu keeps it alive. It's a penalty for England offside. A push, the referee says, yeah. and it will decision. be England's head and feet. A good decision, they're playing on here, the crowd still think it's all on. But it's a penalty England on the 20-metre area, so they'll come back for that one. One of England's great strengths in this tournament has probably been their defence, Justin, so it's going to be thoroughly tested today. It will be, but what I liked about that is they put some pressure on Hingano there. They put the kicker under pressure, and as a young halfback, he's going to expect a lot of white jerseys in his face this afternoon. Well, I've not heard a word either of you two fellas have said so far. I, I can see good, your lips yeah, moving. I can see your lips good. moving. It's all good. I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Wow. Every tackle. Every tackle is greeted like that. Watkins out of Dummy Hall. Graham now. Running back down the channel. Here's Hodgson. Brown on the inside. Back for Hill. Hill putting on the footwork. Trying to batter his way through. Jason, we were talking to Josh Hodgson earlier this week about the atmosphere, and he said, you know what, players on the field don't actually notice the atmosphere once you get into the game. I suspect he's noticing this noise. I think he's telling you fibs. Here's Burgess. Chance to break. Looking maybe to keep it alive, but down he goes. Ryan Hall at dummy half, back to Gale again, up goes the kick, not the best from him, McGilbray oh, will catch. catch, and the play, oh. oh, he's giving it away, giving it away and taking the risk, and Tonga have it back again on the 20. Well, I thought it was a great catch, and he had to take the punt, McGilbray, Watkins was sniffing around him, the fact that he went to a red jumper, they're coming up that play as well, exciting start. Oh, it's dropped, referee says play on. Tonga still have possession. Hold, Josh. Hold, mate. Hold. Referee, through. by the way, we didn't give him a name check, so to speak, earlier is uh, Matt checking. Video referee should we need him. Ben Thaler is uh, in the box, and Chris Butler, Robert Hicks running the lines, by the way. Here's Tomalolo. The wrecking ball that is Jason Tomalolo. Yards after contact as ever, but they're on the sixth again, so Havili takes it out. Widdop carefully draws it in and he's gone over now has he hurt himself here Gareth Widdop or is that a, a slip it's just a slip I think McGilbray England looking to organize themselves here from deep here's Hall really looking forward to the involvement of Four wingers here. You've got McGilbray who's been in fine form. Hall, high quality player. Then you've got Tupu and Fusatua on the opposition side. They're going to have big involvement, all four players in this game today. There's Burgess. That's the fifth. So England just inside Tongan territory are going wide to Brown. 
McGilvray lets it bounce, and it will be a Tongan head and feet at the squad. Well, a couple of things early. I don't think our last, England's last two kicks have been all that hot. They've decided to put the ball high. I'd like it to go a whole lot deeper so they can challenge Tonga to get out of their 10-metre and 20-metre area. But it's been a ferocious start. They're not missing each other. Here's the catch from McGilvery in the flick pass. Whoa, Whitehead, if he gets out, he's under the sticks. Come in, come together, Josh. I'll wait, wait for the outdoor. Thanks, Gareth. Ngano, the young New Zealand warrior, very much on home territory here, will feed the ball. Suddenly his fifth international though for Tonga, he's um, highly inexperienced, as is the man alongside him, Lola Hare of West Tigers, but they've had a very decent tournament so far between them. Chris, same mate, all the way mate. Very much the focus coming into the game would have been on those two, no doubt about the big man, but... What kind of craft can the, the halves cut out as well? Havili. Here's Hura. Havili up again. They're on to the final tackle. Havili goes wide. It's um, Lola Hare who puts it high. Woodup stands his ground and leaps and takes. And England will start from there. Yep. Been overcooked the kick, we'd have had the opportunity, they've still got to catch it, turned his back to protect himself against the oncoming Tongan traffic. Watkins. Whitehead. This is Hodgson now, his size is up at dummy half once again, looking on the inside where Hill is waiting. He's almost low here, Chris Hill. That's a very decent carry by the Warrington prop. The kick is again looked for the corner. Daniel Tupu will take it. And a decent England chase will keep Samoa Tonga rather down there. Well, Hodgson got the kicking duties there. Decided to nail a kick towards the corner. The England chase up to it. Daniel Tupu, a very dangerous runner himself. Maho. James away. Andrew Fafita half through with the offload as well. From England's point of view, it's just as well it didn't go to hand straight away. Will Hopawati will search for a bit of whip on that right hand side. And they've got an opportunity there momentarily for Fussy Tua, but England's defence is quickly across to close that chance. Six tattle coming up. Where are they going with it? Left footed slide kick which bounces straight into the hands of McGilvray. His go forward is limited to that, but he'll be happy to have it back again here. Well, a couple of things there. I don't know if you picked up just in the offload football from Tonga. Could be a real problem for England if they allow them to do that. A couple of offloads in that sequence made that set six, seven, eight, nine tackles long in effect. Tonga certainly playing to their strengths in the opening minutes of this game, going through the middle with their big men. And the one luxury they do have with Fafita and Tomalolo is not just their size. That's a great ball from Graham. That's got Widdup on the loose. Gale is up there trying to get rid of it with him. Widdup now ducking away. He has support from Burgess, but he's still going here, Widdup. And eventually stopped 20 metres out. Great moment for England. Great break from Gareth Widdup. Great inside ball. Gale's going for the chip early here as well. Paul's up there. And I think they might have given a penalty away, have they? It's head and feet to England, surely. England feed, mate. England yeah, feed. it is a scrum. It is England's head England and feet. Feed. I think that's an area that they'll definitely target for the game. With the Tongan big men in the middle of the field, we can see a great inside pass there from Graham to Widdup. And I think that's an area that they'll definitely target for this match. Try and get, a, get the big men to move laterally in and that A defender and that marker. And that's a great line break. And that'll do their confidence a world of good. Great kick to finish the set as well from... Luke Gale. Real indication that they're keeping their heads in amongst all this noise and all this emotion. He's been a revelation, hasn't he, at full back, Gareth Widdup? It's Gale. Back it comes to Kevin Brown. They're trying to craft something here. Try it's going to be an opening try for Jermaine McGilvray. 
It's now 10 consecutive matches in which he has scored for England and England's craft from the moment that Widdop made the break to the moment that McGilvray touched down was something to behold. Well, it's smart football. The break initially, but there's a big play from the scrum. Gale goes into the teeter line. So does Brown attacking the outside defenders. And it's just a catch and pass to get McGilvray into the corner. That's why I love Widdop at fullback. It gets him a pass wider. Brown gets to deliver the pass to Widdop. He's smart enough and experienced enough to ball play on the back of that or use his strength, which is running. On that occasion, chose to pass to McGilvray, who's been one of the form players of the tournament so far. And they go in for the first try. Well, here's the play from the scrum. Hodgson releases Gale in at the line, Brown in at the line. I love it. And Widdop, just with a two on one at the end, he's the right man for that job. You're right, Justin. Does it so well, Gale diving into the line too, doesn't he? He just sucks in those defenders and opens up or conserves the space on the outside. Well, Gareth Woodhouse's kick here is um, in exactly the same position. When we were down on the side of the pitch, he was practicing his kicking from exactly that position. It was almost as if they anticipated that is the most likely area in which they were going to score. So all his kicks were from here. So he knows the range. Has he got it this time? Oh, yes, he has. With the help of the upright, the ball bounces in. It was a nerve jangler, but it still counts. And England lead by six points to nil. Yeah, great starts. The inside ball initially, this is a scrum play. And it was on the back of the, the James Graham, superb inside ball to Gareth Widdop. Well, it's quiet in the crowd. It's not silenced them exactly, but it has quietened them down a little bit. I think we're down to grand final levels at this stage. Tucky Ho, who's uh, been missed, certainly was missed in the last game for Tonga because of a knee injury, but um, he's been very much a star of the tournament. He's the man who's restarted here. Hodgson again at dummy half. Burgess on his inside again to test out that resolve, but boy, there's some big bruising shoulders. And amongst those Tongan middles. Penalty again for England, and, and that's that's gonna settle things down again a little here. Well, we've, we've seen England struggle with giving penalties away in these, they're not warm-up games, the early rounds of the World Cup. It's nice to see them having the discipline of mind, discipline of controlling the ball, superb ball movement, and they're getting the benefits with a penalty there from the referee. Here's Whitehead. Hodgson in at dummy half. Less than 40 away, five tackles still to go. Hill's the man who fancies the job here to take them on again and put England a little closer. Hodgson. James Graham is pawing the ground and gets the pass away to Gale. It's a little loose, picked up by Bateman. Hurrell quickly on his case. James Graham stayed down, by the way. He looks in a bad way at the moment, James Graham. A Lachlan. That's a concern. Referee stops the clock because Graham's in the way of things. Well, it, it was tight, wasn't it, the play? And Gale nearly got robbed as well, so James Graham certainly took one for his troubles. I didn't see whether he was laid or not, but he certainly copped one in the ribs there. So hard to brace yourself for the contact after you've relaxed and passed the ball. For England's sake, I hope he's OK. I've been impressed with Burgess's start to the game. His involvement's been very good. He's had three or four hit-ups. He's had strong carries. He's earned his team a penalty down the other end. Here's the replay. Takiyahu just, yeah, he's just relaxed his body there. He's a tough character. Well, there's another one we were talking to in the build-up during the week, and he said to him, are you looking forward to the game? And he said, looking forward is not the right phrase, because it's going to be such a physical challenge, it's going to hurt, but certainly very excited about it. He's going to be OK. He's staying on the field anyway for the time being. Gale dummies to a couple. Hill now will take it in. Hodgson lines up at dummy half. 
final tackle to go again. Brown with the chip, that's well flighted. It's uh, taken easily by Tupu, but look how close he is to his own line, close enough to encourage that England defence to push him back, but they hang on to Tonga. But they've got a lot of work to do. Look at England's response in defence here. Yeah, they're vigorous, their line speed's good. Look at that line speed from England. And James Graham, who was lying on the ground in agony just a couple of minutes ago, is leading the challenge. Tomalola, his threat diffused on that occasion. Fafita, good offload, but there goes Watkins all over Hingana. They're going to have to kick here soon because they're running out of tackles, but they can always make the break, of course. And Conrad Hurrell now on the end of great stuff from Lola Hare. The pass on to Fossi Toa inside for Hurrell again, and it's going to be Jennings held up just short. But his tackle, and then he passes the ball. Well, it was thrilling stuff from the Tongans, but in the end, the Australian referee, Matt Chechen, decides the tackle was completed before the pass was made. Well, Penalty for England. First and foremost, breathtaking from Tonga. They've decided to spread the ball because England brought the heat with kick pressure in singles. Watch here. They're out in the break, they're broken free now, the Tongan side, and then it becomes a three-on-one and a two-on-one. So Ka Ryan Hall and Gareth Widow have the devil's own jobs to do, and you thought every day of the week they'd score here, but what great cover is. Look at that man, it's that James Graham. He was down on his haunches 30 seconds ago with no ribs left. Nah, that's the right decision from the referee. His ankles, his elbow was touching the ground. What a chase back from the England players. Very impressive. The big fellas as well, wasn't it? As you said, Graham Burgess very much involved. And O'Loughlin will take it forward. It's an incredible battle so far as Hudson goes out of dummy half. He hits the shoulder of Hurrell but comes bouncing back and makes the break here. Hudson, super stop. Chopped down by Hopperwati, but look low where he's put England here. His hurt though is Hudson. He's taken a real bang to the knee. Making breaks, both teams, aren't they? Back through the middle again, England. Just looking to use some footwork, change of angles. He bounced off Conrad Harrell on the right edge there and bounced back through the middle. Here we go. Bounces off Harrell, comes back through the middle, uses a bit of footwork, gets past Takiyaho. It's fairly innocuous there. I'm not sure what's happened to his knee. Oh, is that a hamstring? Well, he's back to his feet. He's from hole, mate. They're tough there. Thanks, mate. We're getting lots of re references to the toughness of hole, aren't we? In this program today. Look at that. Look at all those Tongan supporters. There are. In that crowd, there are four or five thousand England supporters here today. But there's 25, 26, 27,000 Tongan supporters. It's the biggest crowd here at Mount Smart since 1995, when the Auckland Warriors played one of their inaugural games against the Brisbane Broncos. And the Brisbane Broncos coach that day, Wayne Bennett. And here he is again, essentially, as the away team coach. O'Loughlin, Brown with a pass, Whitehead with a dummy, and he's got support from Winnup, who's very close, surges for the line, the referee's going to ask the question here. Thanks, mate. I've got, mate. I've got no try, Ben. OK, mate. Confirm double movement, please, mate. Okay. Double movement is what they're looking for. So the live call on the field is no try. Yes, please. Tackle five. Now, we'd like it full speed to start with. Sorry, tackle four. So, thank you very much. Right. What I need to determine is if a player has hold of him at this point on the ground, when the ball can't have touched the ground. At that point, no, he doesn't. The ball can't have is still up, and the ball is then grounded. Can I have it from that other angle again, please? Yep. 
just slowed down on base. So the man, at the point when the ball kind of touches the ground, has fallen off the tackle. There is nobody holding him, so he can play on. The ball is still up in the air, it's still up. And the ball is now grounded on the line. Therefore, I've got my decision and I'm going to the ball. So the decision comes, and we know what it's going to be. England have the try, Woodup has his second. And English fans all around are on their feet and cheering. What a wonderful start this has been for England in this semi-final. Well, this is great play from England. Lachlan and Brown at the line, which releases Whitehead on an inside shoulder, breaks the tackle. Whittups in, Whittups in support again. And the referee, the video referee, explained it way better than I could. There was no defender on him. He's allowed to play on, so he bangs the ball on the line. Well, you might get the feeling that the Tongan supporters are not happy with that decision. Widdup's kick is good again. It's two out of two. But as far as England starts concerned, it's a 10 out of 10 performance so far. They lead by 12 points to nil. It's great ball movement here. O'Loughlin involved. Does well to push through that hole, Widdup, and realise there's no defender on him and continue on. To execute that play, the passes have got to be right on the button. And O'Loughlin started that play there. And talking before the game, Novi, he, he's world class. He is really world class player. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100% world class. So Graham will lead the charge again. And let's not forget, it was a try scoring effort at the other end from James Graham, who just been. Of course, there are so many good stories at the moment for this England team in relation to... We talked about the emotion of the Tongans and how we can get up. We've seen plenty of emotion from the England team. I mean, it's been absolutely perfect, hasn't it, from their point of view, the way it's gone so far. And we, we hark back to that mid-season game against Samoa when, you know, ahead of the game, a lot of people thinking, oh, this is going to be a tough task for England, and they played one of their best performances for many a year in that mid-season international. And they're putting together something similar here. This is Burgess. Five gone, here comes the six. Shuffle back to Gale again, who puts the kick downfield for Hopawati to go cantering after. Well patched, but well chased. In fact, over chased, offside. I think it was John Bateman who's um, been pulled out by the referee. He said he was in front of the kicker, Kevin Brown. Went two passes for the Brown kick. And the short side players that eventually making the tackle were a couple of metres in front of Kevin, offside. I really like the positive style that England are playing. They don't mind moving the ball in their own end, they're aggressive with their defence. It's a, it's a real positive style of rugby league. That's a good effort from Tamalola. You're not going to keep him quiet for the whole of the game. There'll always be at least one or two incidents that he makes his mark, however well he's marshalled. Maho. Will Hopawati in at dummy half. Taken on again by Tokihaho. The Sydney Roosters prop. He's Auckland born, is Tokihaho. Havili. Lola Hare. Looking for the outside, well, I think there's a miscommunication there. Not sure what they were attempting. And it's seven tackles as well, because he kicked the ball dead in goal, which gives England the extra play from the 20 metres. Dangerous ball runners, the Tongans, if you leave them alone, they get round the side of you, it opens up opportunities for them. England are going to have to manage that. But an example there, Justin, of this um, inexperience in the halves. Yeah, Lola here, there, he would have been best just to take the tackle. But he's got the attitude, he loves rolling the dice. But uh, he will learn over time. 
Hopefully not today. Whitehead. Here's Hodgson at Dummy Hall. Brown now. Gale goes wide quickly. The ball's been dropped at least by one, maybe two. I think the referee will go with the first knock on. It'll be Tonga's head and feet. I think the England players were claiming that they probably batted it back and it was knocked on by Fussy Tua. Almost on the outside of Harrell there. He looks like he's pulled up a little bit lame. He's got that leg bandaged heavily, whether it's his hamstring or not. Last week against Lebanon, he got shown up a few times, just a little bit indecisive in defence. So I've seen Burgess go down that edge a couple of times already today. So we might see a little bit more attack at Conrad Harrell's centre position before the day's out. Yeah, a lot of the talk yesterday at the, uh, the two captains' runs was that Tonga would be making a few late changes to the 17 they announced because of the bangs and bruises in their side, but they have stuck with the advertised 17. James, come on! Jennings. Come, come James. Daniel Tupu, another of the Roosters. Scotland fans will remember him scoring a couple of tries against them earlier in this World Cup. Here's Maho. Avili is the dummy half. Fafita offers it back on the inside. But again, they reach the final play here to Tonga. The kick is Lola Harris, but it's um, it's much too close for Ryan Hall. He's going to take those all day, isn't he? Well, well, that's the difference in the quality of kicking at the moment. England have managed to produce a couple of kicks with pressure and have created a lot of pressure on the catches of the Tongan team. In fairness, Hall and McGilvery, the, the two or three times they've had to catch the ball, they've been under That's very little pressure. Game. One of the trump cards of the Tonga team is their two wingers on the end of kick, so they'll need to continue to pressure the young halves with their kicking to make it easy for McGilvery and Hall. Just saw a shot there at Tom Burgess, is about to come on from the interchange bench. This might be a 40-20 attempt here, but um, it's cut out by Hopawati, and uh, I think that's the first involvement of Tom Burgess. Big shoulder, big tackle, Tupu. What have you spotted, Brian Noble? It's just that it's becoming a little bit harder for the bigger Tongan players to get behind the ball. He's played three or four now and just back in place for Tita. Hello. Lots of energy, lots of presence, but plenty of determination for those England defenders. There's been one left on the ground again. I think it might be Hodgson who's stayed on the ground behind the play it's a penalty here for Tonga and just the awarding of a penalty has lifted the volume by 100 notches Hodgson's down in back play getting attention there from the trainer looks to be in a little bit of pain is that the same knee that he was um, that was hurting a little earlier yeah I think it is Got a fairly decent replacement to come on though if they should have to do that. To get my vote, James Roby. He's been great this tournament, hasn't he? What a luxury to have. You know, one of the best hookers in the world sitting on the bench. And he comes on when you take another hooker that's most probably in that same bracket. You know, in the top half dozen players in their position. Let's have a look at this, see if there's any uh, contact here. Maybe just a, a little bit of an overstretch there from Hodgson. That's a real hobble, isn't it, as he comes to the sidelines. You talk about him being from Hull, I think you'd have to prize him away from Canberra at the moment, wouldn't you? He's absolutely loving life in the Australian capital is Josh Hodgson. And playing very well as well. I like the makeup of the England bench. You now we just talked about Roby. With Tom Burgess, we saw his first involvement, a good strong tackle. Wormsley's been outstanding throughout the tournament as well. And he's throwing Ben Curry there as well. It's a really strong bench. They come on and they can make a difference. 
Well, James Ribby is um, having to wait to come on. I think he was pleading his case there with Robert Hicks on the sidelines, and eventually he's won that argument, so he can come on. Alex Wormsley is about to come on, as we say. Hudson limps away. And here comes Tucky Howe. Big test of England's defence here, with plenty of tackles to come. Almost ripping through, Mahu with the offload has given it away, and the test is passed at the very first from England's point of view. Well, oh. <coughs> Watkins. That's a get out of jail card from the Tongans, passing the ball straight to the England player on play two, because they were looking to be threatening. Well, that's the thing you're going to get with this England team. If you fly at the line and try and bash them, you might get hurt yourself. Well, Tom Burgess must be made out of steel. They absolutely flew at him, and he pounced through. Gale goes left to Bateman, who puts the step on, and offloads back to Gale, who's lost it in the tackle. Picked up by Fusitua, and he's an exciting runner. And Tonga looking to come left here. This is Hingano with the ball away. Six tackles start from here. Tomalola. It's running in hard, but the handbrake was put on quick, quickly. Ingana comes inside again for Fifita. Opawati. Here's Terepo from Parramatta. It's now in the hands of Ingana again. Jennings. One of the superstars in this Tongan side. Tupu. Back again to Hingana. This now is Fafita running across the face of those defenders and slips a good ball away. Sukumanu now on that right-hand side. Haru taking on two defenders, somehow gets the pass out. It's basketball style at the moment. But there's a knock-on at the end. And England survive once more. Tonga just lacking a little bit of rhythm with their attack they seem to be a little bit flat they don't have the the waves of attack that the england team have when they've got the ball but i'm loving the scramble defense from england just the two exact points i was going to make just in england i've been really good defensive in this tournament and the danger from Tonga is if you let one of these big blokes get away and they find an offload or run to the side of you but the number of white shirts in the frame that's tom burgess <laughs> Welcome to England. Oh, no, we're in... Where are we, Auckland? <laughs> we're in New Zealand. Siliva Havili. Absolutely smashed. Rodeo. Come together. Seconds off, please come in. Wait for the out call. Down nice and tight, Will. Thank you. Out. First drive in by Ryan Hall. Many of these wingers put some yards on in this tournament so far, especially this fella, McGilvray, picked up just for the ground. There's not many that do that to Jermaine McGilvray. Time out, tackle two, go back onto yeah, the mark. He'll keep coming. Go back on the mark, mate. Wait, what? Wait. Referee wants to make sure everything's OK here. Burgess. Notice that... Um, Brother George is here today as well, watching from the sidelines. It's Wormsley. Roby's up there quickly. Burgess again, Tom. They're on the last. Kevin Brown, kick away ahead of the challenge from Fafita. Caught superbly well by Daniel Tupu. He's got a bit of space in which he can run, but... I think it's Kevin Brown underneath all of that who got his body in the way of it. And a lovely stepping, sliding run again. This time from Jennings. And they'll get a penalty for the holding down there. James Roby feeling he had to hang on because the momentum was very much in Tonga's favour. Yeah, not a bad decision to give away a penalty there. Well and truly on the back foot after a couple of decisive runs on the back of a poor kick from Brown. Been very good in the first 20 odd minutes kicking. The last couple of kicks have been a little bit scratchy. There goes that Tonga, Tonga chant again. At some point in the game, they will start to sing hymns, these Tongan fans, and it is 
it is spine tingling when they do that. It's tended to be in the second half of the matches we've seen so far. Katoa, and here comes Serepo. It's a good effort. They've still got three tackles to go here. Ingano, Fafita, fancies he can see the line well enough to get there, but he's lost the ball. Well, that's another let-off for England. And I think if England have got any concerns going towards this second half, don't give the Tongans broken field play to run in. He's in a couple of bad kicks that just since highlighted, which has given Tupo the chance to find some broken space, and Jennings has flown out of dummy half, and it's really enabled them to get to the right part of the field. They've used for feeder in that play a couple of times already. They used it against Lebanon last week, and the exact same result, I think he spilt the ball in the tackle. Interesting move from the Tonga team. Jason Tombalolo's come from the field, and you wouldn't imagine he's going to come back on before half-time. Arguably one of their best players, and for North Queensland, plays 70, 80 minutes sometimes, so whether or not he's struggling a little bit or if it's a tactical move from the coaching staff. Here's McGillivray, by the way, the, uh, the completion rate for England, hoping not to jinx them here, 87%, which is much, much better than their tournament generally. And exactly you find that when they're they're they hang on to the ball, they get penalties as well, so they're probably winning the penalty count. I'm not sure what that is, if I could... Yep, 4-3. Girls touch finder. Ben Murdoch Masilla is on the field now, on his way to Warrington, of course, next year. Murdoch Masilla, after a barnstorming year with the, the Salford side. He's had a barnstorming World Cup as well, Dave. Out on that right hand side, he's, every time he's been on the field, he's created something. Tom Burgess. He's certainly, certainly given this English side something since he's been on the field. Warmsley now. That rampaging effort of his again takes England 20 metres out. Three tackles to go. Central, great position. Roby goes left. Gale switches back to O'Loughlin. O'Loughlin searches for what might be on offer down the middle. Backing in. Roby quickly up there. Burgess gets it on. Gale again. Widdup's quick hands. Bateman, well read by uh, the winger there, Pussy Tour. And the ball's been lost by Bateman, and you have to say, wonderful wing play in defence from Fussy Tour. Well, it had to come because they created the numbers England and didn't execute the play. Fussy Tour had no other option. He had to nail Bateman or it was a try, and he does that. Watch this. Played at the line, good hands from Widder. Boom! Didn't miss him, did he? Here come the hymns, Dave. Here come the hymns. Almost as good as Red Red Robin, eh, Justin? Almost. So Tonga looking to bring it clear. Here's the man of the moment on the sidelines. Tongan supporters would love to see him on the field. Offload is good. Katoa. Another good carry by Terepa. Murdoch Nasella. Well, the thunderous roar going up around the stands again as Tonga bring it forward with bruising intent here. Conrad Harold takes three of them to drag him down. They're on the last. How good is the six tackle play here from the Tongans? As Kingano. Left footed kick is not a bad one. McGillbray's under pressure, doesn't get to it. Kevin Brown is there, and England survive another scare. Great support for the winger there. Kevin Brown working hard to get behind the ball, and if he didn't work hard to get there, possibly it falls into the Tongan hands. Great teamwork there from the 5 8. Just about to make the same comment about the number of white jerseys in and around the ball. There were five there compared to the three Tongans. Hall. Oh, 
Here's Roby. Watkins. Searching out the middle again, making those Tongan middles work hard. Burgess. Penalty for England. Second effort in the tackle from Tonga. Well, he thinks he's had a pull at Sam Burgess' leg here. I think Lola here is round the leg, is he, or over the top, trying to buy himself some time. Anyway, it's a penalty. We didn't quite see how we went on with it. Wormsley will drive it in with the hymn singing as an accompaniment. Quickly to his feet, England in a terrific position again here. Burgess, another wave of attack from the Wall of White. Roby stands and looks. Graham to his right, Wormsley to his left. It's into the hands of Graham, but Burgess, Tom Burgess knocks it on. I think that's the first handling error on the run from England. No advantage for Tonga. And so it'll be head and feed for the side in red. Well, he's saying he's got no advantage. I thought he was player to that. Well, it's an unusual decision there. Either should have most probably been a penalty or a scrum and loose head to the England team. Both teams are guilty of giving away on early plays. Play two here, play two there. Another one for Tonga. Or try scoring opportunities in the opposition 10 metre area. Come together. Wait for the out call, fellas. Wait for it. Wait, wait. Out. So England looking to put the vice like grip on again in defence here. Stand Helped now. by that Stand now, Mike. fumble. Oh, Just took out the sting on Ingano's run. England scrambling away again, making sure their opponents are kept to a minimum. Here's Mahu. Off the arm! Collected by Katoa. This is Pangal Jr., who's lost it, and up in possession come England again. Burgess, Sam Burgess to his feet, Warmsley now. Well, they're back where they were just a few moments ago. Come back, fellas, hold. Wait, wait. An opportunity to execute a little more efficiently this time. Graham with a step. Ben out. Come. Roby. Gale. Burgess. Cigarette. Meet and muscle meets meet and muscle. And the answer is stop 10 metres out. Wormsley threatening to run over the top of them on tackle five. Here comes the last. Roby skips it out quickly. Gale gets it where he wants it. Win up. Trying to create a bit of space here. He got a kick away. It's knocked on by Will Hopawati. And this should be England's head and feet again here. Well, he got swamped there, would it? Because they created the numbers again, England. He found a kick. I think this is England's head and feet at the scrum. I think Hopawati's knocked on here. Yeah, yeah. What a great piece of skill. In traffic, somebody got their arms wrapped around you, drop it onto the, onto the toe and just put enough weight on it. There's the interception there from... Sam Burgess, and here we see Widdop, a couple of players all over him, puts it on the boot, and that's a knock-on from Hopawati. I think I think England fans were kind of, the jury was out on um, on Gareth Widdop as an England player with his previous performances for England, but he's been an absolute revelation at this tournament, hasn't he? We'll hop in, he's we'll been get terrific. Time, mate. That's not in. We'll get in. We'll... Jermaine yeah. McIlvray's not fed many scrums. Brown. Watkins. England massed. Options right and left. Here they come down the middle. Tom Burgess this time keeps the ball safe as he drives it in on tackle two. They're only five away. Another try here would hurt, but it's Sam this time who can't keep hold. He's claiming it was knocked away by a Tongan defender. The referee wants none of that. But hang on, the touch judge does. The touch judge on the far side has intervened here. Sam Burgess was adamant that a Tongan player knocked it out. And it's um, Mr Butler on the far side, who I think is in agreement, and England will get the head and feed here. Well, let's have a look a little bit closely. Gale goes right into the teeth 
Yep. Just a finger touch finger there, wasn't tipped. it? Yep. Sam Burgess is giving Lola here all sorts of nightmares. He doesn't know if to stay back, come up. And the that's, that's what's been missing from the England team, a bit of a threat on the left-hand side. He's helped Gale because he's Sam Burgess's get-out clause. You have to pay attention to Sam Burgess if he's running that. Hang on, mate. Just what a chance on here. Get on the goal line now. Get on it. Get back on the goal line. Get back. Out. Here's Brown. Bateman. Almost oh, cutting on. through. Roby stands at dummy half. England standing on the brink of a, another try here. Back to back sets effectively for the Tongans to defend, more or less on their own line. Roby, Brown, back to Gale. In comes Widdop. Tries to step against the grain of the defence, but Lola here hangs on. Sam Burgess down the blind side. No weakness found. Wid up at dummy half. Gale. Oh, it's a testing pass. Well, James Roby was done no favours there with that pass. The defence rushing up right in his face. And he can't keep a hold. Yeah, he did well to get anywhere near it. The width of the pass gave the, the Tongans the opportunity to get forward and rush the England catchers. I think play four round about there. I think Kevin Brown should look to kick here because they see how far forward the Tongan defensive line in there. Little kick towards the second post there. May prove some dividends and take a little bit of steam out of the Tongan charge. Two minutes of the half remaining. And Saliva Havili looks as though he might have recovered from his uh, collision with the Burgess boulder and he's going to be coming back again potentially the last set that um, Tonga will have possession here in this first half Murdoch Masilla It's Pangal Jr. Release now, fellas. Come back, come back, Tom. Hold on, mate. Go for it. Havili. Milking this blind side here. Oh, cool. Terrific hands from Jennings. Tuko's on the fly. Pulled down. Jennings is there in support. Look how many England players are back there within about 15 metres. Just about every single one of the 13 was almost back there. So now Tonga go right. Step again from Lola here. Puts the kick on. It's collected by Widdop, and that's OK. But England in survival mode there were terrific again in defence. Wow, brilliant, both sides of the fence. Well done, Tonga. The, the pass down the sideline from Jennings to Tupu was sublime, and it broke them into the backfield. But wow, how many white shirts scrambled back, got back quickly, and defended the next play as well. Here's Bateman. He's rugged and determined. That's 20 seconds or so of the first half. England will just want to see this out safely. Roby. This should be the last play. Well, he'll go down and the hooter will sound. And that has been a terrific first half in terms of the two England tries that have been scored, the noise and emotion that swept down from the stands and the performance of James Graham in particular, who I think we're going to be hearing from, chatting to Monty Beethan in just a, a few moments' time. What a half he's had, James Graham. And let's go down there and hear from him and Monty Beethan alongside him. Well, Graham, there's not a lot in it. How's that... Um contest in the middle of the field. Oh, mate, it's tough. Uh, we've got to be on every play, but we knew that before the ball was kicked. So points won't be enough to win this, will it? Uh, I don't think so. We've got to defend for our lives uh, and keep turning up for each other. Good luck. Thank you. 
Well, you've been in this position before against a tier one team. What must you talk about in the half time right now? Oh, just going back to basic footy, mate. We've got to complete our sets. We chopped a few balls there and good ball, and so we've got to make up for that. Good luck. Thanks, Walter. Well, the noise hasn't lessened much when the players have been off the field. It's um, an adventure here today, it really is. We, you get a feeling we're on the cusp of something in rugby league terms as well. With the, with the way Tonga have um, performed at this World Cup, there's a lot of talk locally about in Australia, they have the state of origin, Queensland against New South Wales. Well, look at this crowd here today. They're already talking about country of origin on a regular basis. New Zealand against Tonga maybe somehow throw Samoa into that mix as well. You'd sell it out, no doubt about that. But England, minds and focus fixed on Brisbane next week. Leading as they do by 12 points to nil. Job so far has been good, but plenty more to do with 40 minutes left to play. Gareth Winnick. Gets us underway, and I'm sure a cautionary note would have been sounded in the England dressing room at half-time that in the group game, when Tonga played against New Zealand, they were trailing 18 points to two at this stage and swept home on a tide of emotion on the second half. England cannot take their foot off the gas here for a single moment, Brian Noble. Not for one second. The ex example you gave there about how they came back against the Kiwis. The fact that the focus is nowhere near Brisbane yet, it will be. After this second half is complete, they've got to get back to what they were doing in the first 20 minutes of that first half. Yeah, the back the back half of the first half, too many errors crept in, and if they continue to start this second 40 minutes with some unforced errors, that will invite Tonga into the game. Lola Hare's kick is caught by Widdup. And England start 10 from their own line. It's Roby out of dummy half. So still no Hodgson on the field, we assume he's gone for the game. McGilfrey. Another carry from him. This is Graham. Fronting up with those big men again to put England on the halfway line just short. With one play to go. Kick to come here. Back to Gale. Relatively enough time to get a, a big kick away, but it's caught on the fall, which is always an advantage for the opposing team. And England's chase has to get up there as quickly as possible. Well, they've got to persevere with that, England, if they grind out this first 10 or 15 sets of this first half, as they did Ooh. in the first half. Is that a ball steal or was it a loose carry? Well, the referee's given a ball steal, but to my eyes from up here, it looks as though the ball was coming clean anyway. Well, they've got a break then at the start of this second half, Tonga. Let's have a look. Will be around the ball. Yeah, he dropped the ball. Yeah, that's a tough one. That that's that's just a drop ball after good contact. So it has given them an advantage here in terms of territory. Avili. All over him. All over him, he says. So another penalty. For Tonga, they've given the uh, double leg up here. And a chance now to lift again as Murdoch Masilla takes it close. If they score early in this second half, England are in trouble. Avili, inside it goes. Sikamanu, pushing hard, five away. Avili's there at dummy half again, lining up to his left and right. He'll try and go himself. England's defence is too good for that. And it's Manu who waits. Lola here to his right. Manu's trying to go as well. Well, that's a dumb play, you'd have to say, because England's wall was waiting. And Garno trying to create some numbers here. Over the top it goes. Oh, oh, it. Good. Absolutely blown away that chance. Tupu couldn't keep hands on ball. And England survive a real scare. Well, he, he, he was in. He was in. What a ball as well. Found the right pass. Oh. What a pass from Hopawadi. 
Tupu spills the lollies with the line open. Well, I think that shot tells you a story. And that was an escape for well, England because concede there. Well, there's an amber flare should have gone up with the England team. The penalties, one was harsh, I thought, but it gave Tong a field position. They're good at this part of the field. They'll find a player, they'll find an offload. They're strong ball carriers. Don't give them that opportunity. That's a penalty too. Chance to clear their lines still further. With a great deal more ease than it might have been the case. So Roby with a tap restart in England. Looking to regather their composure and regather some ground here. Roby. Tom Burgess waits, collects and charges. But they're up in his face. Roby again. Now Graham. Warms it to his left, but Graham's going to slug it forward once more. Roby. Warmsley, Masilla, Murdoch, Masilla hits hard, but Warmsley gathers another yard or two. Still a couple of plays to go. Gale, inside for Bateman. Runs into trouble straight away there. Defenders up in his face. So this will be the last. Gale puts it high. We're going to let the man catch and uh, make the tackle there. It's not a a bad place from England's point of view for Tonga to start their set. Interesting from Tonga, three of their best forwards still on the bench for Fida, Tomalalo and Takiyahu. A couple of them standing up now. Expect them to be put into the game pretty soon considering they're 12 points behind on the scoreboard. You want your best big men out on the field. Well, I think you'll be looking for a big impact from them. Tomalolo down there is getting a lot of massage, isn't he? It's, um, it looks as though they're treating on him, putting running repairs on him. And that's a, a kick that McGilfrey needs to be careful with. The chase is good. McGilfrey's got three straight on his case, but he bounces one away. But he can't run without his ankles. Tackled by Jennings. Here's Hall. Lifted and pushed. That's good lift from this Tongan team after this second half. Sorry, at the start of the second half. Rovis quickly up there, and here's Bateman. And Tomalolo, they've just finished the massage he was having down there. There's four of them primed and ready on the touchline, waiting to get back on. Last tackle, fellas, lock in marker. What's your kick, Matthew? Gale's kick just dips and jags off the ground. It's a little more complicated, but easily back by Tupu. James up! Keep coming, keep coming, fellas! Hole! Go to. Press it to it. Release now, Tom! Here's Hopawati out of Dummy Half again. England right in his face. Running out of tackles here, Tonga, still inside their own half. Carried in by Tangai Jr. Here comes the last. Kick is from Lola Hare. It's quite deep. But Winnett was almost in the Ingle area when he caught that, but he wasn't quite, so he has to run it clear. There's a bit of an arm wrestle going on at the moment in relation to who can kick better than who and who can make the most metres out of their own half. I think this will help England if they can stay in this game and do this, because... After well, the kick, this is... Wow, he's a good player, isn't he, McGilvery? Oh, he's been outstanding this tournament. Roby does really well as well to get over the top of the defenders to carry it on and offload to Widdup, who has a bit of width provided by Whitehead, who runs a channel that's concerning from Tonga, but they eventually make the tackle stick. But here comes Gale, and this is Burgess, and just enough of a, a challenge from Hurrell to put him down. And the ball has been stolen after the referee shouted hell, so... I think they're going to kick for goal here, aren't they? Well, I would. I think they sound wrestle business. We saw there the benefits of England. Dummy half running from Roby from McGilvery. Tongan's tiring in and around the middle. Stick with it. Get the penalty. Takes you three scores in front. 
up until that set, you most probably thought that Tonga had the advantage. They certainly had the territorial advantage, but a couple of really decisive runs by the England players got them on the front foot, and the penalty breaks the breaks the arm wrestle. And Widdop looks like, yes, he's going to go for the two points. Sometimes it's just one or two players that make that decisive run or fight that extra hard to get up and play the ball that can that can break those arm wrestles open for teams. And on that occasion, McGilvray and certainly Burgess at the back end contributed to England getting the advantage. Yeah, you're bang on, Justin. Playing that patience game. I'm still going to have to keep playing England, but don't close the game down. This team are too good, the team in red. They'll get you. You clock off for one second, they'll get you. We saw down there a shot of um, Andrew Fafita pawing the ground almost. Tucky High likewise. Widdops, penalty. Has he struck gold? Yes, he has. England have a three score lead psychologically, if nothing else. That's a huge blow from England's point of view. Tonga know that the comeback has just been made a little bigger here. Well, they're going to throw their big guns out. They've got Tamalola warming up. Fafita wants to be out on the field. Tekiaho, all three should be out there for me. Got to get Tonga back into the game. They can play big minutes, all three of them. Tekiaho has been playing 70 minutes. Fafita can play 60, 70 minutes every week. Tamalolo can play 80. My theory is get your best players out there and leave them out there for as long as you can. And here comes Wormsley to lead England's charge back again. We know that Toki Hai was coming into this probably with an injury. He missed the game last week with a, a knee injury. It's an historic knee injury he's had as well. So you can only assume that he and the other two, Fafita and um, Tamalolo, are, are clearly hurting too. But their selection was a gamble here. This is Graham. Needs a bit of ground play on, the referee says, so he gets up, but quickly Mahu is into him to put him down again. Gale back on the inside for Burgess. Tom Burgess. Good now comes the sixth. Good set after points to be able to put in an attacking kick like that and land it 10 metres out from the line. Oh, and they'll get another, another lot of possession here. Well, the kick on from Sam Burgess. Knowing knock that on. there was a knock-on, so England get the head and feet. That's a great result for England. Great exit set, as Justin explained to our viewers. A rock and roll. How good has James Graham been today? A little play in the middle, footwork, finds his front. He broke seven ribs about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> They've got some world-class players in the team, England, haven't they? Mentioned Sean O'Loughlin, who, you know, I know we're talking before the game. I, I put him in the same category as Cameron Smith and... Jonathan Thurston, he's he's that level of world-class player. Okay, Phil, throw in Sam together. Burgess, throw in James Graham, Roby yeah. we've spoken about, Second Hall, ball, we'll McGilvray's ball, putting we'll himself on the international it, stage. Out. Here's Gale, and now Brown, and here's Widdop. Solid enough challenge on Gareth Widdop, wasn't it? But England have five more tackles to attack this Tongan line, and look how close they are. Spun back again. Another big drive. I think that was Whitehead who's in the middle of all of that. Gets up and plays it. Roby quickly out to Brown. Brown back to Gale. Inside for Sam Burgess. Looking for a little corridor. But the door slams shut in his face. Roby. Bounces to Brown. Bateman with a little bit of a step. Still a couple of tackles to go. Tonga's defence comes out quickly. Gale has it, Tom Burgess sets the platform here. Right it goes, into the hands of Gale. Well, a coldly sat down in the end from Whitehead. I think he wanted to get in there and out there as quickly as possible. He got in there, but he couldn't get out, neither him nor the ball could get out of it. I liked what England saw. I would have probably preferred a little bit of a kick on the end of there, that play, because they create the numbers again. Oh, no. and Whitehead just can't quite get rid of the ball to Widdop. I'm not, I don't mind turning the ball over 10 metres out from the line. You make the two tackles now, they're 25 out. If you can't get a quality kick away, you know, get your line set. Samalolo's back on the field. 
He'll be trying to inflict as much damage as he possibly can here, broken or not, on this England line. It was his defection in inverted commas that really set this tournament live before it began, wasn't it? Tom Alolo's. Oh, the referee's um, decided that was knocked on. Played the short sides well to Dave Tonga. There again, they create the space. Opawati attracts Bateman at the dummy half position. Hurrell gets rid of the ball. Marcella's trying to get rid of the ball. The two on one there on Carl Hall. Ryan Hall. Good work from England all to be on the same page. You know, not somebody stepping back, somebody coming forward. Once somebody engaged, they all engaged. And while they give away another set of six, they've looked really well connected defensively this tournament. Nobby, I, I really been impressed with the way they've been connected. They're singing the hymns, by the way. This is not on the PA system. This is the crowd singing the hymns. And while that heavenly stuff goes on all around the stands, the Christ bang wallop continues in the middle. The hell's furnace of this rugby league game. Tonga are getting close. England's defence winds itself up. Here comes Murdoch Masilla. What's the referee given here? Masilla's lost the ball. Last play. Well, what a release for England that is. It is. James Roby putting his body in front of Murdoch Masilla there. Great work from the little man. <laughs> Maybe a hand, possibly. Oh, no, look. I didn't see any hand there, did you? No. no. I think there were 29,000 Tongans did. There's a lady down below us in amongst a throng of Tongan supporters who rather bravely just stood up and flown a, an English flag. She quickly sits down again. It's Roby. Wormsley. Rattling it forward again. England ramping themselves up. Survived a scare or two in this second half. But they're still in the box seat at the moment. The longer the game goes on, the greater they draw belief from this Tongan side. McGilbray, the destroyer. But they're on the last here, England. Here it comes to Gale, who sticks it high in the air. Hopawati comes forward. Out comes the winger as well, Fusitoa. He's clung on somehow. It was a great catch, a great catch, because I think Sam Burgess is competing for the ball with him in a fair jump. Oh, hang on. Hang on. I think the touch judge might have said something here. Well, eyes on the ball. He's allowed to do that, isn't he? Yeah, that's a fair competition. He hasn't tried to tackle him at all. Yeah, that's fine. I think it's going to be play on. Yeah. He's a good footballer, that Fusatui, a real athletic winger. Fortunate enough to coach him for a couple of years and really seen his development over the past 12 or 18 months. He's got a big future ahead of him. Here's Hurrell. Not sure what went on there, but it was just somebody pushed a button and every single Tongan fan in the ground was suddenly off their seats and waving their flags in the air. Here's Tomalola. Just imagine how loud it might get if Tonga were actually able to get themselves back into this game. Well, that'll help. He's already made a difference, hasn't he? Tamalolo. 
How do you stop him? Well, here comes drive number one from Nanu Mahu. They're 12 away and getting closer. It's now Takiyahu. Time on the bench, but back on the field. This is a moment that England need to stand strong. Katoa comes out. Here's Tomarola bouncing off two or three shoulders one way. Going another, but England defenders swarm around. And down he goes. Katoa. Left again, and oh, and a surge from Fafita. We know what he's like. We've seen him in a grand final score from similar range. Back it comes again. Left it goes this time to Mahu. But that's five attempts gone. They've only got one left. England. England defending well. Hingano with a little dummy. Then gets the kick away. Hall's underneath it. He's got a challenge up there as well from Fussy Tua. Well, that is one of the ways they scored against New Zealand in the group games with a leap of Fussy Tua. But this time it slips through fingers and it's England sat back on the well, 20. I'll tell you what. There were four, probably five white shirts in the frame when Fussy Tour went up there. So he was hounded. He was all under pressure to make the catch. He would have been caught and barreled out. That's fantastic defence from England. Oh, their goal line defence. Rovi put his body in front of a couple of big men. Brown on that right side made a really important tackle. Their defence has been excellent. Watkins. Still going here, Callum Watkins. He steals an extra 10 metres. He's another one who's come of age in this tournament for me. Well, Lachlan left to Gale. Hall finds himself in the left centre's position. I think he's so much better, Callum Watkins, when he goes looking through the ball in and around the middle, finds himself a tough carry, if you like. 100% right, 100% right. He's been a great player at Super League level, and he's really starting to show that, that development in Super League on the international stage this tournament. Brown, Whitehead. Almost through, and Brown was there, just couldn't quite keep a hold. The referee's allowing play on here. Well, I think he was waiting to see how it finished. Thought he might be tempted to go for the video ref, just to make sure that it was a knock-on and not a ball steal, but um, he's made the decision for himself. All right. Just look at the number of white shirts in the frame. It's a great leap, if Fuzzer who he gets there, but Gale's there, Bateman's there. Ryan Hall's doing his best to did he actually bat the ball out. The crowd figures just gone up 30,003. Well, there's a few sneaked in that shouldn't be here, I think. You look at the gates in either in all the corners, you can still see people coming in. They must have counted us three to make the three. Here's Takiyahu. Murdoch Basila. Good carry by him. He's going to be good for Warrington next year, isn't it? In by Lola here. Tomalolo. Looking to get to his feet quickly. It's uh, Katoa who gets it away quickly as well. It's on by Takiyahu. England's defenders having to get back quickly here. One play to go. Down the blind side, they search. Pingano with a little chip over the top. Woodup's underneath it, but he's bumped. Tackled in there. Oh, they didn't yeah. time it well enough. Yeah. Just a little too much enthusiasm. It's the right call. The locals are not happy about it, but it's the right call. Gareth Widdup was in the air and he tackled him. Smart play from Widdup too. Just he knew that if he could get his legs off the ground there just for long enough, that he'd definitely get a penalty. Brave play, smart play from the fullback. Just too quick when push came to shove. Had they waited a little longer, pushing and shoving would have done the trick, but it's England who get the penalty. Elliot Whitehead's had a big game. I think he's had his best game of the tournament as well. There's a little bit of nonsense going on, and Fafita... Stepping in here with Hill, looking after his little mate. Okay, 
I say little, mate, he's bigger than the average human being, he's just not that big as on that particular playing field, is he? So Tom Burgess will continue the charge. Roby left, and um, that's Curry on the field, isn't it? The first time we've um, we've seen him in the second half. Tom Burgess, Sam Burgess rather, one to go. So here comes Gale to uh, hook it towards the corner again. That's another good kick because. It has put Tonga for the time being on the back foot, and Fussy Toa is limited to just five yards or so. What have you made of England's kicking game in this match so far, Brian Noble? Uh, room for improvement, but I think they're giving the chasers time to get down there in this second half. Certainly better than what they're dishing up in the first half. Completion still up there at 82%, by the way, for England. Katoa, Tomalolo, look at, they're going left here, they, they put on the ship, they put on the ship and Jennings is putting on the afterburners but his pass was poor behind Daniel Tupu and it's another opportunity that when they look back at the video in the cold light of day they'll consider an opportunity miss. Uh, they created another short side didn't they, Jennings got down there, made the break, here's a play from Jennings, gets in between the two people but my reflection on there, there is still five or six white jerseys on the scramble, so that puts him under pressure to try and find the right play, but he couldn't. I know we've mentioned it a couple of times, but you're 100% right, Novi. The, the scramble from England today has been phenomenal. You know, you talk about those white jerseys in the screen, and every time there's a line break or a possible kick to the corner, they're all working extra hard to, to, to get the ball or make the tackle. Eleven mistakes that Tonga have made, and they're behind in the penalty count as well by eight to six. Stats that are reflected in the scoreline. Two tries. If you are joining us late, and again, fully aware that it is very early when we started the game, very early in England. But McGilvray and Widdop with the tries in the opening 15 minutes have given England this platform that you can see in the scoreline. 14 nil. Here comes Hill. Sam Burgess back down the middle. Robies in at dummy half. Gale with a probing kick towards the corner. That's a good kick. That is a terrific kick. It'll take a very good play for wow. Tonga to get out of here. They tried it, but they couldn't pull it off. England's chase superb. That's the first class kick that you want. That's Gale being smart, kicking the ball in the in goal, getting the ball back, and attiring red jumpers coming back in and around the middle. The big blokes doing their job and pounding away and taking the juice. And then Luke Gale doesn't quite come up with a tackle, Luke Gale. But, but he, he, he bumped him a little he bit. Bumped him. Got so waited till the rescue came. Soki Hoho with a kick. Brown with a catch, Hill with a return, here he comes on the charge. England setting up camp inside the Tongan half here. Burgess, Tom Burgess, that's a good carry, that's a terrific carry. From Thomas Burgess, who's put England right back where they want to be here, 15 yards away. Roby comes out, Gale. Sweeps it away, Widdop with a time pass, Bateman back on the inside, England have their third try and they have one foot in Brisbane already if this is given. Matt Chechen is going for the video, I think what we missed there was him saying he thought it was a try on the field. They're looking for obstruction, here's Ben Thaler. Live 
look for this angle. Oh, it's a pass. Okay, that's good, it's fine. It's on the inside show, let's find the ball is gone. My opinion is not obstructed. We can play this on, keep going to the grounding. I'm happy to play on from this. Yes, it's tightening on the grounding. Happy there's no obstruction. Okay, I have my decision, I'm going to the board. England's try. It's looking now as though it's going to be England's semi-final. John Bateman's score. It's a long way back from Tonga. England are getting closer to Brisbane. They certainly are. And that's just pressure. The middles in the English, the English middles are just pounded away. Tonga look really tired. That makes that defending on your edges very, very hard. And that's tired defence. That's what England have done to them through this game. Set up by a great charge from Tom Burgess in the middle. Made a 15, 16 metre run. Got a reasonably good play of the ball. And the play from Widdop. You know, the double pump to hold up the defender and put Bateman over. Great work there from Widdop. So here's Widdop's conversion attempt, and he's nailed that as well. He's not done a lot wrong tonight, has he, Gareth Widdop? And at 20 points to nil, England know now. It is very nearly job done. Tonga have to score four times to get this semi-final back on again. Well, there's Tom Burgess. And we talked about the physicality of the Tongans. You know what? In the end, England have been just as physical and got out on top. But all that's served to do is ramp up the noise a little bit more. The Tongan fans are not going to go home quietly. Justin Morgan, how are Australia looking at this England performance, do you think? I think they know they've got a challenge on their hands. They really haven't had to really get out of first gear for the tournament. I was impressed with England right in, in game one. And it was interesting comments from the coach when he mentioned that England have to play their best at the back end of the tournament, not the front end of the tournament. And I think they've really built their performances over the, the rounds and into the quarterfinals. And now this is most probably one of the, the more complete performances from any team in the competition so far. So if they play like this, and as Nobby's alluded to, can make sure that their kicking game is on song, they will definitely trouble, trouble the Kangaroos. Well, it's on the back, not a finish yet. By the way, if you got up early this week, your reward is you don't have to get up quite as early next week for that final in Brisbane. It's looking now, with 12 minutes to go, like England against Australia. The England players on the field will want to hold their concentration here. Fafita. Lost it. Stolen. Penalty. Tonga. Havili with a quick tap. Ngano offers it on to Tomalola. Havili again. Ngano's pass. They've got a few numbers there, but England's defence is tight. Watkins came in and made that tackle. Ngano. They're just asking the big man to try and make something happen here, Tokahal. Havili. Ngano's pass away. It's wide. Still got a couple of plays to go. Ngano again. Fafita. Bowls it away to Murdoch Masilla. Over the top to Harrell. Back to the middle comes Fussy Tua. Lola here. Namahu. Oh, it's lost. It's lost. Winner picks it up. And you get a sense that Tonga now, if not before, are beginning to lose belief. Well, they've tried everything, and do you know what? England have been up to everything. That was a set where they tried to probe every hole and offload the ball up. Fafita got one away, and you're looking for a break or a chink in this English line, but there hasn't been one. Off the ball, fellas! Bateman. Ready up, 
It's a place on the field here. Feel uncomfortably comfortable, isn't it? John Bateman down the middle. He loves the, the physicality. Roby. Here's Gale's kick. Pussy two underneath it, claims it. Burgess up there in his face. They've got to take risks. They keep it alive. Hopawati. Solid effort by Kevin Brown. Here's Herald. Tomalola. This threat has been kept to an absolute minimum in this game. Pavili. Fafita. Lovely little flick from the big man. Hopawata is joining up the dots here for Satir. Has nowhere to go. England's defence turning a potential into a cul-de-sac. But they go left. Here's Ingana. Kevin Brown holding on, holding on. Ingana has to flick the ball away. Tokiaho tries to straighten up. England's defence is ready for that. So on the last play, Lola Hea with a lovely little jinking run, which has opened up options here. Kevin Brown got a hand on that, and Watkins picks it up. He knows that it came from an England knock-on, but a rather necessary England, England knock-on. Yeah, they're out, out on numbers. Elliot, and that one. Time off. We've got time off, fellas, for the ball. Talk there. about limiting Tom Alolo. Like it's it's right, only mate. just made over 100 metres in the game, so for 116 metres, Tom Alolo. And there's been games where he's run for 300. You'd expect him at this point of the game to be 250, 240. So that's a great effort from the forwards from England to keep his meterage down. Here come the hymns. Well, guess which way Tonga are going here. Every single man on this near side. Sakiyaho. Seven and a half minutes to go. Mission improbable is now surely mission, mission impossible. Havili. Here's Avili again, looking to feed something, trying to make something happen. Pango, I think he might have got to the line there. I think he might have given Tongan fans something to cheer. He thinks so too. Just confirm he doesn't lose it before it gets But he wants to make absolutely sure. OK, so you're making sure there's no double movement, Matt. You, is that right? Sorry? You're making sure there's no double movement. No, and make sure he gets to the line. Yeah, he's making sure he gets to the line. Thank you. We have a try on field. So we're just looking at the grounding. As the ball gets to the line. I see it on the line, Ben, but yeah. I don't know if it's been lost before it gets there. Has he kept hold of possession of the ball? On that, I can't tell if he does. So I need to do that. Got the ball in his arm then, it's grasped. His hand's still on the ball. Live call until the try. We have another angle on this, please. The ball does look like it does end up on the line. So it, no other one it. This is over. Uh, do we have any other angles on that, please? Can I just see it again? Can I can I just see it again at full speed? Full speed, please. The ball ends up on the line there. So I just want to see it at full speed. Full speed. Right, I'm happy, I'm going for the ball. Yeah, man. Well, it's a late consolation that Pangai Jr. is going to get a try here. And the stadium has just erupted. As if that was a try, the second is the World Cup final. If you're just switching on and you're an England fan and you see this, you think, we're in trouble here. Look at that reaction. 
It's a bit like that Justice League film, isn't it? They're all in. I would have loved the bloke that sold all the flags. Be counting his dollars this afternoon. We're going to see some football now. We're going to see some offloads. I don't think I've ever heard such a such a moving reaction to a, such a meaningless try. Well, they've lost the ball, but clearly not meaningless in terms of the uh, the Tongan psyche. Now Bateman. He kicked the goal, by the way, 20 points to six, the scoreline, as you can see. Hill. Up now! Come back! Hold, fellas, hold. This is Roby inside for Kevin Brown. England would love to finish with a flourish. Wormsley would love to take them there. His first international try in the last game against Papua New Guinea. It's James Graham with a short pass for Hill. Gail. Brown. Well, the decibels shooting up again. Out from dummy half goes Whitehead. He's going to be held up. Held up on top of five. Try now. Play the ball there, mate. Play the ball. Play the ball. Last tackle. White. I've got a call come up. Elliot, line. Wait, wait. Come on, last tackle. This is the last tackle, you might have guessed. Gale with a kick. Hall bats it back. Widdup tries to kick. Well, eventually he says play on the referee. And Tonga come up with it with Hopawati. I really do hope you're getting this atmosphere back home because never been in a rugby league crowd as loud as this. It is unbelievable. It's a great way to start your Saturday, isn't it? Okay, Haku, taking James. it in. Hold, mate. Hold, James. Go for it. Go for it. Right. Gano gets it away. Tonga desperate for another now. England not really in danger in terms of the result of this game, but they would not want to concede twice at the end. Look who's there. James Gray around the legs of Harold. But a step back on the inside from Lola Hare. That looked forward. Fafita gets up and plays it. Avili carries it now with real intent here. He's swept away one, and over he goes. Just the fast play, the ball there. Missed tackle from Hill. Very hard there after the speed of that ruck. Interesting last three minutes. Well, this element of desperation that Tonga are fine right of the death. I've got this crowd bouncing even more, Dave. Well, when he scored that try, it was like 10,000 jet planes all landing at the same time. Is there something incredible that could possibly unfold here surely not with three minutes to go they would still have to score twice more here Tonga it's a big set coming up though
We saw that incredible fight back against New Zealand. This would be beyond spectacular. Here comes Jason Tomalolo, looking for support. Has it on the inside. Running away goes Lola Hare. Lola Hare is underneath the sticks. Something incredible is on here now. It could not be any louder. Three tries in the space of five minutes. And there is still time for Tonga. Wow. Soki Haho puts it over. 20 points to 18. And it's Tonga Lalo. Shrugs off one, shrugs off two. Barnstorming run from the back rower. Picks up Tui Lola here on the inside. And this crowd has come alive. Two minutes left on the clock. Incredible. That's just incredible. Look at that sea of red. Winner puts the kick downfield. One minute and 57 seconds left to play. One try wins it from here now. England were home and host, already on the plane to Brisbane. And suddenly they have a fight on their hands again. Here's Tomalola, charging with all his might. Wave of emotion crashing down from the stands, fueling this incredible fight back from Tonga. But feet is held up on the halfway line. Runs wide, does Pangai Jr. Kept alive to Hopawati. Here comes the last play. This is it. Last play, they're going to run it. Conrad Hurrell gets a pass out towards Fussy Tua. Inside for Lilla Hare. English hearts heartbroken five years ago against New Zealand. It's now, it's McGilbray who intercepts. Jermaine McGilbray. He has the ball not free. Tom to have it back and another six tackles. 45 seconds to go. Here they come. Listen to this noise. Tumalolo, rise the tackle of Graham. Taking on superhuman powers. Gets it to 10 metres out. 30 to go. Took a hell. Held up. England on the line. Havili. Hello. Crashing forward. If they score, there's no way back for England. No time. English hearts are beating now. English minds focused on keeping out this red wave. Left it goes. The Vita, he's lost it. The Vita's lost it. And England have won it. In that moment. Well, the referee's got a decision to make here. He has lost it. He's not going to be moved. The blood full time. And that is full time. What a finish. What an occasion. What a World Cup semi final. Well, England, England almost threw it away. Tonga almost found a way to win from the impossible. But England have held on and are going to Brisbane next week for the World Cup final. Brian Noble, Justin Morgan, make sense of all of that. I, I can't, I'm out of breath, I'm pick, shattered. Pick that me was, up off the floor. What a game of rugby league, what an event, what an occasion, as you've quite rightly said. There are, there are players in red jumpers, flat out on the floor, in white jumpers, flat out on the floor. And I tell you what, it's, wow, what an ending to a game. They've had to fight for their lives right at the death, England. For the majority of the game, they were very good, England. Very, very good. And they did well to repel Tonga for the last couple of minutes. It's been a cracking atmosphere and a great game of rugby league. Great advertisement for rugby league. But England go through to the final.
to take on the Kangaroos. Well, the whole the whole occasion here, from start to four hours before kickoff, until the very last second of the game, has been truly amazing here. A unique rugby league event. I have never seen anything like it in all the years of watching this game. It'll be a day and a match that lives long in memory. And let's get some reaction to it now. Monty Beath, and I think he's going to be talking to Gareth Widdop down there. So let's get some reaction to that amazing game as we listen to the hymns. Gareth, congratulations on the man of the match performance, but also first time in 22 years that England is now in the final of the Rugby League World Cup. Yeah, it's a great, great feeling. Obviously, with plenty of young kids and farmers back home watching this, and you know that's that's for them. It's, it's been a long time waiting, and look, it's one of the best games I've ever played in this Tongan. These Tongan supporters are unbelievable, and you can see tonight they turn up and they're passionate and they keep fighting till the end, and that's what they did. And the Twelve Boys credit, we hung in there and we're off to the final. It was only a minute in real time, but how long did it feel when you saw it panning out and potentially Tonga coming to within two points of winning this game? Yeah, it, did, it felt like forever. Like I said, they're a passionate bunch of blokes and they fight till the end. That's that's what they're about. And um, like I said, to, to the credit, we, we fought till the end and we got the victory, but they deserve a lot of credit. They've been great at this competition. Also, your defence deserves a lot of credit. Outstanding throughout their entire match. It's only towards the end when Tonga threw everything at you that they're able to, to, to break the line. Yeah, definitely. Look, they're a, they're a tight squad. They throw a lot at you, and we scrambled really well tonight. We had a lot of chases back there. They could have scored a lot more points, but yeah, our defence is the cornerstone of what we're about, and you know we need to bring that into next week's game. Good luck for next week's game in the final, mate. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Ta. Well, Sika, it's a tough game to swallow. You came back in the end. There was only two points separating you with seconds to go. A drop ball probably summed up the night for you guys. It's a tough loss to take, mate. It's, um, the boys have played really well the whole tournament. And, and to go down to the wire like that, mate, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud to be um, you know, part of the scrim. You have been a joy of this tournament for everyone to watch, whether they are Tongan or not. To see you guys go out now, it's hard for us to swallow too. But I'm glad that you came back towards the end and showed the Tongan Rugby League that we've been accustomed to watching. Yeah, mate, well, it's, uh, you know, it's, we're called Mate Ma Tonga, mate. It, it means die for Tonga. And, um, you know, throughout the whole tournament, we've, we've, we've played for the full 80 minutes. And, uh, you know, we never give up. And we showed that again today, mate. And we just hope, um, you know, uh, all, all our Tongan people are proud of us. Unfortunately, there won't be another game for you next week, but for you now, the special memories you take from this tournament as the captain of Mate Matonga. Yeah, man, a lot of good memories, and uh, this, this group is, uh, has, has been an awesome group to be a part of, and uh, you know, we've got a lot of good players and a lot of good leaders in this group, and you know, I just hope we can carry it on um, leading into the next World Cup. How do you think England's going to go next week against uh, Australia in the final? Well, I hope they go well, mate. Um, they, 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 they've been good the whole tournament and um, they really showed their class tonight and you know, unfortunately we just lost by two points but um, I wish them all the best and, and I hope they go well against Australia.